Back in the old days of the internet, all web-based systems were made up of three parts, the client, the server, and the database. Now, the server's main purpose was not just to serve up the static HTML and CSS, but also to act as a barrier between the client and the database. Now, the server would typically filter out the bad requests so that a hacker cannot gain access to the sensitive information on the database and or manipulate it. Now, most databases back then were relational databases and they used a language called SQL, and if a server fails to filter out certain requests contained in SQL, then that will make the database susceptible to a vulnerability known as SQL injections. So bottom line is, a server is very important. Now here's the thing. Firebase is serverless, and if you know the basics of Firestore, you will know that we send requests from the client directly to the database using the Firebase SDKs. So how exactly can we prevent a rogue client from manipulating the JavaScript on the front end from making a request we did not intend to make to our Firestore database? The solution is Firestore security rules, a flexible syntax of rules to allow or deny reads or writes to the database using a language known as common expression language. To get started, create a Firestore database and set it in test mode. Then, once it's created, navigate to the rules section and delete request.time and change it to allowed read write if false. And then hit publish. Congratulations, you now have a secure Firebase application. But the problem is, this is too secure as my Firestore database has a collection with a user in it. And whenever I try to read this document, I will get an error message stating that I have insufficient permissions. So stick with me throughout this video as I de restrict the levels of permissions and please make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel and let's get started with Firestore security rules. Now before we get started I'd like to show you the data model that we've been working with and as you can see here I have a users collection with five users. Now user number one and user number two both have a sub collection called posts. You can also see that every single user has a name but some users have a sub collection called posts and some users don't. And now that we know the data model that we've been working with, we can now focus on the Firestore security rules. Which brings us to rule number one, and that is every single security rule follows a particular path. So as you can see, we have the keyword match, and this means we want to match this particular path. And the path that we have here is forward slash databases, then forward slash the database name. Now the name of my database is not a database, but rather this is a wildcard, which we will talk about in a moment. But then after the database name, we have forward slash documents, and from there we will need to match the collection and then the document. So I'm just going to remove this boilerplate over here and show you just how it would look like. So after documents we would have forward slash the collection name and then forward slash the document ID. Now I have a collection called users so I'll just provide the users collection. Next I know I have a document with the ID of 005 so I'm just going to provide that 005 ID. Then once I've provided the path of the document I can choose which rule I want to apply to it. For example, allow read if true. Now if I go ahead and check inside of the browser, you will notice I still get the error message where permissions are insufficient. And that is because I'm trying to read the document with the ID of 1. But if I change it to the ID of 5, it will print out Ellie to the screen because Ellie was the user with the ID of 5. Now there is a problem with our code and that is only the document with the ID of 5 can be read. We as the client have insufficient permissions to read the rest of the documents. So how exactly do we allow other documents to be read from the user's collection? Well, the solution to this is the wildcard. And wildcards are just like variables in any programming language. It is simply a placeholder that we the client are querying for regardless of its ID. So in order to create a wildcard all we need to do is open up curly brackets and then give our wildcard a name. I'll just call the wildcard user because it refers to the user document. Now inside of VS Code as you can see Ellie is still getting read and every other single user that is on my Firestore database. Now I think it's time to note that there are two kinds of wildcards. The first is the one that I've just showed you and the second is exactly the same but attached to the wildcard name is equals star star. And now the difference between this wildcard and the second wildcard is the same as the difference between Firestore security rules and CSS. And that is Firestore security rules does not cascade its rules. So without the equal star star, our allow read if true rule will only allow to the user documents and not the user's sub collections documents, which are the post documents. 
However, when I do equals star star, this implies that this rule will apply to the user documents as well as its children which are the post documents. Now the second reason why Firestore security rules are not like CSS is that CSS does not have nested styles, whereas in Firestore security rules you can have nested rules. For example, this path over here is way too long, so I could simply reduce its length by removing this and placing it inside of another path, and this should work as long as it is prefixed with the keyword match. And now if I wanted to reference the post collection which was a sub collection to the user collection, I could just make another match statement with the posts path inside of the users path. Now I think it's time to show you why I never really use the equal star star wildcard. As you can see here, since we are using the equal star star wildcard, we are allowing reads to the user document as well as any documents in sub collections. So I've just decided to create a second sub collection called sensitive info. Now the sensitive info will contain a document with the sensitive information for the user so that whenever we read the user's information say we visit their profile we'll just retrieve the user document and not receive any sensitive information like their email addresses so that's all great and i could just go into my rules and add another statement say match sensitive information and allow read if false therefore nobody will be able to read the sensitive information document and you might think this would work but there are two things that you need to know about firestar security rules and the first is Whenever there is a true value, it is going to override any falsy values. So if I wrote down allow read if true and right underneath it allow read if false, it is going to be true. And since we are cascading to the sub collections, it is going to be true. Secondly, this is not entirely like CSS. As mentioned before, yes, the equal star star wildcard will allow cascading down to sub collection documents, but that is only because we explicitly told it to. Unlike CSS, where the final style is the style that counts, in Firestore, it is only the true rule that counts. So if I save it and check inside of the browser, you will see it reads the user document just fine. However, I'm going to comment out the read user document and provide a read sensitive info function. This function is just going to reference the sensitive info document and then log it out to the console. So now if I go ahead and check inside the browser, you will see I will get the sensitive information. So therefore, what I would rather do is remove the equal star star and always explicitly target the document I'm trying to apply a rule to, even if I am simply repeating myself. Now so far we've been taking a look at the paths of our rules and how rules cascade and don't cascade down to sub collections but we didn't focus on the rules themselves we have used allow read if true and allow write if false but that's pretty much it now essentially allow read can be broken down into two separate rules the first is allow get and the second is allow list. Now allow get allows you to read one document and one document only, whereas allow list allows you to retrieve multiple documents. So if you are running a specific query and you want a specific rule only to apply to whenever you're getting multiple documents that are different from rules that apply when you're retrieving one document, then allow list is the one that you're looking for. If you want to get one specific document, that will be allow get. Now normally we don't tend to use allow read, but rather allow get and allow list separately. And likewise, we also have allow write. Now allow write itself can be broken down into three different rules, and that is create, update, and delete. So we might want to write a specific rule that will allow somebody to create a document but not update the document or not delete the document. In that case, you want to use allow create and not allow write. Allow write represents these three rules together. Now you may notice that I've used allow get and allow list, but I didn't write down next to it if true, like I wrote with allow create if false. And that is because allow get is the equivalent to writing allow get if true. It is only when we want it to be false is when we type in if false. But most of the times we would be typing in expressions. For example, I could put in allow get if 2 is equal to 2 and that will return true and if I change it to 3 that will return false. But that's still not good enough. We want to for example allow reads to documents if the user is logged in or perhaps if the document that we're trying to read belongs to that user or if the document that we're trying to read is public. So now it is time to talk about two different kinds of objects that we have in Firestore rules. The first is the request object and the second is the resource object. The request object is the data that is coming in from the client, whereas the resource object is the data that we are trying to access on the database. Now the request object 
has two properties that you need to know about, and that is the auth property and the resource property. This resource property is not to be confused with the resource object, which was the existing data on the database, but rather this resource property contains the incoming data. For example, if we wanted to create a user, the details of that user will be on the resource property. Now the auth property is based upon whether we used authentication or not in our application. If we used authentication, we would be able to check if the user is signed in or not, or check if the ID of this user matches the ID that belongs to the document, assuming you've created an owner property on that document with the user's UID or even check if this user has an email or if the email has been verified. Okay so now I think it's time to take a few examples. Say for example whenever a user signs up to my application I want to create a user document with the ID which is the same ID as the UID that Firebase authentication gives them when their account is created. And say for example I don't want anybody to be able to update or delete a user document unless they are verified as that person. Well, in that case, I could do allow write for create, update, and delete, and then I will check if the request.auth.uid is equal to the user, which in this case, the user here is the value of this wildcard, and the value of the wildcard will be the ID of the document. Now, what if I want to check if the email for this user is also verified? Well, in that case, I could just add two ampersands to make a logical and statement and check if the request.auth.token.email verified is true. And if both these operations return true, then Firestore will allow the write. Okay, so now say I want to be able to add a post. Now, obviously, if I'm going to add a post, I need to be authenticated and I need to prove that that post that I'm posting belongs to me. So in that case, what we can do is match the path of the posts. Then inside of the path for the posts, we'll provide the rule. And the rule will be allow create, and we'll check if the request.auth.uid is equal to the request.resource.data.ownerUID. So whenever we create a post, this post will have a owner UID, and we'll just check if they match. Now you might be wondering, what if somebody from the client side decides to amend the request.auth object to match the request.resource object? And the answer to that is they cannot do that because everything is verified by Firebase server side. So generally you can trust this code. But what happens if I want to read multiple users posts? Say for example, I have a newsfeed and I want to be able to view the posts of the users which I follow. Well, if I go into VS Code and comment out the current code that I have and paste in a function that has a collection group where I query all the posts, you will notice I will get the same error message, missing or insufficient permissions. And that is because we have to allow reads to these collection group kind of queries. So back in my security rules, I'm going to match a particular path and this path is going to use the wildcard with the equal star star. So we're matching any kind of path that fits before posts and then we're using a post wildcard to match with any post. Next, what we want to do is allow read. And now if I check inside of the browser, I will get all the posts being displayed to me. Now I did add another field to my posts in Firestore, which is is public. And some of my posts have true as public and some of them have false. So now if I wanted to set up a security rule to only display the public posts well then in that case I will allow read if resource dot data dot is public is set equal to true but there's something very important we need to note and that is whenever I run my query I'm going to get that error message again saying missing or insufficient permissions now the reason for this has to do with a very important fact that you would commonly hear when working with Firestore security rules and that is security rules are not filters for instance, if you take a look at our query, we're not filtering out anything. We're querying for all documents that are in a subcollection called posts. However, Firestore security rules are only allowing us to query for documents that have a property of is public set to true. So in other words, this query does indeed have insufficient permissions because Firestore security rules is not going to take the time to filter out the documents that do have the correct permissions. It's going to check the security rule and if it applies, then it will perform the query. So what we would need to do is to make sure that our query follows the guidelines of our own security rules. And in this case, we would need to provide where public is equal to true. And since we are only querying for the documents where public is equal to true, 
we will get those documents back. So now there are two things that I want you to note. The first is, yes, whenever we query for multiple documents, Firestore will not allow us to read it unless we have the correct query. But if we query for one specific document, that is the only time where Firestore will take the time to check if we have the sufficient permissions to do so. Now, the second thing I want you to note is at this point, we do not have the permissions to read our own posts. We can only read the posts whenever we're querying to a collection group. And that is because of this wildcard where path is equal to star star. What we need to do to read documents from a specific user's sub collection and only its post sub collection is to provide allow read inside of the match posts with the posts wildcard. Now, if I query a specific post collection, then I will be able to read it without a query. However, if I decide to query multiple sub collections called post, then in that case, I would have to run this rule. Now, there are three more things I'd like to show you in this video, and two of them are functions that are already existent in the Firestore security rules, and the second one is how to build your own functions. Now, Firestore comes with two kinds of functions. One is called exist, and the other one is called get. Now, exists will check if a document document that is external exists or not. So say for example, I want to allow delete to a post, but only if a certain user exists. I know I'm building a weird app here. So I could check if exists and then provide the absolute path to that particular user. And then once I provide the ID for that user, it will essentially allow delete. Now you may notice that over here it says dollar sign and then brackets. And that is because this here should be a string, but it's not a string, but it is, I'm not entirely sure. I think it is a string. But in order to reference this database, we need to reference it with the dollar sign and then regular brackets. Now, the second function is get. Now, get, just like exists, is for external documents, but it will return a payload rather than returning a true or false value. And this payload will have a data property, and this data property will have the field that is inside of the document. So, say for example, I wanted to allow the ability to update a document, but I only want the client to be able to update the document if they have a property inside of their user document called editors set equal to true. So in order to implement that, I will check if and I will call the get function and the get function will take in the absolute path and I'll make sure that I'll provide the user variable to reference this user and then I will access the data payload as I would access it on the resource object. Next, I will access the editors property and if editors equal to true, then I will allow update. Okay, so now I think it's time to take a look at how to build your own functions in Firestore security rules. Well, say for example, I want to be able to read my own user document if I am signed in. Also, I want to be able to read my own documents. Also, I want to be able to read my own posts if I am the owner of my post document. And I want to be able to write documents if I am the owner and also I have a verified email. Well, let's just go ahead and call the functions first. So I'm just going to change this to allow read if is signed in. Then I would have to create the function for is signed in. Also, I want to allow write if email is verified and also if is owner. Now, since I need to check if I am the owner, I need to pass in the user ID because I will need to reference the user ID in the function. Then for allow read, I will also call the is owner function. So the first function I'm going to create is is signed in. And it's very simple. All we need to do is return and then request.auth.uid is not equal to null. We can also do the same thing with the function for email is verified and then just return request.token.email underscore verified. Now for the last one is owner. I'm going to pass in the owner parameter as an argument and then return request.auth.uid is equal to the user ID that I've just passed in. And now our code is a lot more clear and readable. And I think I'm going to end things there. Hope you found this video useful. Please make sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And on that bombshell, thanks for watching.